We're now speaking with Mr. Philip Putusu from Bombardier. 2012 looks like it's becoming a very, or started off being a very good year for the company. Could you give some, uh, some reflection on, on what you've seen? Yeah, so so far this year, uh, first of all, we've had orders for all three of our product families. So we started in January with an order from Private Air for the C-Series. Uh, out of the Singapore Air Show, uh, we had a very significant order for the CRJ-1000 from Garuda, uh, as well as uh, a couple of reorders from the Q400 from our existing customers, Ethiopian and, um, and Horizon. And since then, the Q400 has actually added two new customers, which was very exciting. Uh, Eurolot of Poland, as well as uh, just this week, uh, WestJet announced that they had selected the Q400 uh, in a very public uh, competition in Canada uh, for a new regional airline. Uh, so, so far this year, uh, we've demonstrated that uh, our products are uh, in demand. Uh, with both existing customers and new customers. So uh, it's been good. Uh, and in fact, the uh, geographic diversity of, the, of those customers also reflects uh, that uh, our efforts to be present in some of these new growth markets for regional aircraft in particular uh, is starting to pay off. So um, in addition to the ones I mentioned, we've also had a CRJ uh, order out of Rwanda uh, in Africa. So we're, we're aggressively pursuing the opportunities, and uh, it's starting to pay off. If you uh, look forward through the rest of the year, you've got, of course, the big air show coming up. Um, you've got comp another competition going on at Garuda. Any thoughts on, on or anything you can share on, without giving away any secrets on, on where, where you might, the company might be headed? Yeah, so I, I'm not really going to uh, talk about specific campaigns, but I would say that uh, you know, once again, the pipeline of activity is is uh, is quite full. Um, uh, the profile of campaign uh, is perhaps uh, uh, a little bit different than it's been in the past. Uh, we are being very active, demonstrating, uh, for example, the Q400. We've taken it. Uh, we took it to WestJet, and that paid off. We took it down to FIDE in in South America, and have uh, gone to uh, uh, several. Uh, uh, potential operators in that region uh, and we're just embarking on a demonstration tour to Africa which will then take us uh, into uh, Russia and then into Asia on the Q400 uh, and, uh, and and so along the way we're visiting uh, a number of different types of uh, airlines and customers who've expressed an interest uh, in the aircraft and that's that's, that's uh, quite encouraging. Uh, on the CRJ side, we also have uh, uh, prospects in, in some of those new markets, but we're also watching very closely the developments in the U.S. Uh, with uh, American, uh, what might happen uh, with the, the, their exit from bankruptcy, as well as uh, what might happen to scope clauses uh, in the context of that uh, renegotiation with their pilots and, and what would that what other opportunities might be created at other carriers as they try and match uh, the scope uh, that, that American uh, is seeking. So uh, it, it's still not, a, uh, I would say, a, a, a boom time. Uh, however, the, um, uh, the indications are that, that uh, uh, the value proposition that our aircraft bring to market are, is being recognized and, uh, and we're uh, able to compete for uh, the opportunities that are out there. I'm glad you brought up North America because that was my final, my final area. <laughs> um, the regional airlines have seen their world turned upside down. You know, things that they contracted for with uh, the majors, majors go bankrupt, majors do things, and they've gone and done capital decisions, fleet decisions, and now they're stuck. And the economics have not gotten easier for them. And your company obviously a, was a giant producer of the 50-seater RJ. A lot of these airlines, the regional airlines, are looking at the RJ, and they've got to be wondering what comes next. How do they how do they deal with this? What is Bombardier Bombardier's vision or view on on the kind of changed environment for the regional airlines in North America, particularly in the U.S.? Yeah. So when you look at the U.S. regional market, the the business model that uh, existed last decade is, is clearly changed and shifted. Um, the distribution of risk between the major and the regional partner has been uh, has been modified such that the regional partner is taking on more risk than they would have in the past. Um, and 
they still have uh, the handcuffs of the scope clause that uh, preventing them from doing some of the things that they'd like to do in terms of getting more efficient flying larger aircraft. That's not to say that there isn't a need for the 50-seat fleet that is there. There, there, There's certainly going to be uh, a need to continue flying 50-seaters in North America. Uh, but we, we, we have seen and we, we expect to continue to see uh, a migration towards larger aircraft, uh, larger regional aircraft, which begs the question, what happens to the 50-seaters? Uh, so uh, we're working uh, uh, through our asset management team to uh, uh, ensure that uh, uh, we not only develop uh, markets for our new production aircraft, but also um, uh, ensure that uh, there's opportunities for those 50-seaters to uh, to be redeployed in uh, in other operations, whether that means uh, operations overseas, uh, where the aircraft would be supplied by the secondary market, or even conversions, uh, conversions to uh, CRJ cargo package freighters, or conversions to business jets. So all of that, uh, essentially, in order to ensure that we have a balanced uh, a balanced demand for. Um, CRJ 200s, which then allows those American uh, uh, regional carriers to perhaps do what they need to do in order to uh, to get more efficient and, and continue to provide the service to the majors. Thank you.